What's up, NASCAR Heat fans? David Land here, and today I am taking a look at the 2017 Teams Update for NASCAR Heat Evolution. Now this costs $10 on the Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam Store. So is it worth $10? I've always said that paint scheme packs are not really worth the money they charge for them. So today we're doing a review and we're going to do a little bit of gameplay to show off what you get in this pack and what you don't get in this pack and hopefully it will help you make an informed product decision of whether you actually want to spend that $10. So, you get this title screen at the beginning now at the game uh, where you can choose 2016 season or 2017 season. Now, as you will see, play the game with the 2017 NASCAR lineup. Multiplayer and challenge modes are not available. Well, that's not the only thing that's not available in 2017. Also, what's not available is your saved career mode. So, the 2016 career mode, that continues on in... Uh, tw the 2016 season, but for 2017, you, you have to restart the career mode, which I find very unfortunate because in my Let's Play series, I was just about to start what is technically the 2017 season. I was hoping to run with, uh, uh, with the new drivers in my saved career mode, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So whatever, let's get into it. Let's start taking a look at the paint schemes. All right, so the process is the same. You just have to choose your favorite driver over again for some reason. Uh, as you can see, I chose Kyle Larson because of course I did. Uh, and the car looks virtually identical except for the fact that it has a Monster Energy Cup Series logo on there. So uh, things are going well right now. But what is nice, I guess I could say you've got a switch to 2016 bar right there. So you can swap in between uh, 2016 and 2017. So I guess that's nice. But you've only got championship, career, and quick race. Now we're going to do a quick race. And we're also going to take this opportunity to look at all the paint schemes that you get in this uh, in this pack. So this is the 42 Kyle Larson, obviously my favorite driver in NASCAR. So we're going to uh, take a look at his car first. You do get the Monster Energy logo up there, uh, but not a whole lot else to go over, really. This is very similar to his uh, 2016 scheme. Uh, the next driver is Joey Logano, and once again, a, a car that's virtually identical to the way it was in 2016. Uh, so nothing really to go over there. Michael McDowell, boy, that looks virtually identical as well to his uh, 2016 scheme. The, you may notice a bit of a pattern here, despite the fact that we do have Circle Sport and Levine Family Racing. So uh, this is a, a partnership between them, and Circle Sport is a new team uh, to NASCAR Heat, so it's good to get them. You got Jamie McMurray, another paint scheme that looks remarkably similar to 2016. Uh, again, this, you know, that's part of the team's thing, though. That's not really an, a, a DMR problem. Uh, you got Paul Menard here, another paint scheme very similar to 2016. I think there's a little bit of difference there uh, on the, uh, the quarter panel, just or on the side panel, just in front of the rear wheel, but that's not the only difference I can really tell. Uh, then we move on to Ryan Newman, which is a brand new paint scheme for 2017, uh, as uh, the cat colors get a bit wider. Uh, I see some Lucas Oil branding on there that I didn't see uh, previously last year. So uh, that's a nice paint scheme to get for you Ryan Newman fans. And um, the Nature's Bakery merchandise continues. Uh, they get a free ride in NASCAR Heat Evolution. Obviously NASCAR or Nature's Bakery did not pay Danica uh, for this year's uh, Monster Energy Series. So free advertisement for Nature's Bakery, good for them. Uh, that's a new paint scheme as well, uh, if you're interested in that. Then you got uh, David Reagan in the 38 Florida Lottery car, and that paint, well, that 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 uh, is just completely not right. Actually, it's right because David Reagan's in the 38, but Florida Lottery has moved over to the 72 car with uh, Cole Witt, which I'm guessing is not in this game. In fact, what the heck? There's no Monster Energy logo on that. What? Why? Why is there no Monster Energy logo on the 38? That's weird. Okay, all right. Uh, there's no Monster Energy logo on this car either. The Ryan, and we got Ryan Reed. We finally got him in the game. That's kind of nice, um, despite the fact that he should be in the 99, he should be in the 2016 version. Uh, so they're doing this Xfinity thing again too, where they get the Xfinity drivers in here. Uh, and there's no Monster Energy logos because it's a it's a Xfinity um, scheme, isn't it? So his name gets to be on the, no, that doesn't make any sense either. Okay, I don't get that. 
All right, so Ricky Stenhouse Jr., uh, where the Monster Energy logos are actually properly placed. Actually, there's no Monster Energy logos at all on the Florida Lottery car. What is going on there? Ah, and here we go. Some new stuff here. So Daniel Suarez, obviously new driver, Aris paint scheme uh, is new. This is actually based on the All-Star scheme from last year, if you can believe it. But the important thing about the Toyotas is that they are a new car model, which allowed me to kind of break my rule of I'm not going to pay for paint scheme DLC. Well, there's technically a new car model in this uh, update, so I decided to break it so I could do this review for you guys. But yeah, new car model, new Toyota. Uh, looks pretty nice, I would say. Uh, can't say that the, it looks any better than the Toyotas did before, but the Toyotas always look pretty good in NASCAR, so uh, not really an improvement, but they didn't hurt the looks of the Toyota. So uh, we, got, we got two... Uh, 19 cars. Wonderful. They couldn't have given Matt Tift a different number, uh, but they uh, included him as well. And I don't know what the heck. Hear any muted TV. Tunity uh, car. So I wish they would have given him like 91 or something, you know, just to change it up a little bit. Uh, and then we'll move on to Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 Tracker Boats. And I, it's actually spelled right here, unlike the Bandwagoner's Guide. Uh, the Bass Pro Shops car. Um, when I do the quick race, I wonder if that car is going to finish second or not. Uh, then we've got Bubba Wallace, which is very nice, and the purple number six. I do like this paint scheme quite a bit. Though it is another Xfinity driver, another Roush Xfinity driver that they're using to pad the field. Oh boy, that's not really boding well for this pack, I have to say. Then we move on to AJ Allmendinger with a brand new paint scheme. Uh, the Kroger Stouffer's Cheese at uh, Kroger car. Uh, Monster Energy logos on this one and correct, so that's good to see. Uh, and then we should have. Uh, okay, we're moving on to uh, Eric Almarola in the Smithfield car. That car never changes pretty much ever, but uh, if you watch Daytona Day, you got plenty of advertising for that, so I don't feel I need to do any more. Uh, and then Trevor Bain's new Advocare car, where they added some much needed color to this paint scheme. I think it's uh, it's quite a bit better now. Uh, so you do get this paint scheme, uh, and Trevor Bain is in the update. You've got uh, Ryan Blaney. Uh, and the, that paint scheme looks virtually identical to last year. Uh, maybe they added a little bit of yellow rimming on the uh, on the on the wheels, but that's about it. Uh, I almost said Tony Stewart. No, this is Clint Boyer's number 14 Mobile One car. Uh, that is the Daytona 500 uh, car that he was he's running, so that's accurate if you're just buying this to kind of recreate the new Daytona 500 for this year. Uh, that's that's cool. Glad that's in. Uh, and then we've got more. We've got a, a truck series driver. We've got Chase Briscoe. Ironically, not related in any way to Ryan Briscoe. Uh, but yeah, Chase Briscoe in the number 29 Copper Standard or Cooper Standard uh, car for Brad Keselowski Racing. So we've got a lot of field field fillers here, folks. Um, then we got Chris Busher in the uh, newly expanded JTG Darty Racing, the Continental Mega Roll 37. That's a nice car to get. I'm very happy, at least, to uh, to see some of these new teams showing up. And then you've got number 12, Harrison Burton for NASCAR Next. We've got a K&N car to fill the field out here. Uh, Konica Minolta, uh, Dex uh, Imaging car, number 12. So let's move on to the next car, and here you go. The uh, the meme car, the Monster Energy 41 for Kurt Busch. Uh, this kind of was an essential car to get in this pack, despite the fact that it was only really run in the Clash, and I think he's running the Haas scheme for the 500. Uh, obviously, uh, the Monster Energy Cup Series needs the Monster Energy car in the update. Uh, Kyle Busch with the new Toyota body. Uh, not much to go over, but again, nice to see that car in the pack. You've got now Landon Castle has moved over to the 34 Loves car. Aside from the Monster Energy logos, it looks virtually identical to last year. You've got the 19 for Austin Sindrick. Wow, we've got a lot of IndyCar connections in this one. Uh, but uh, uh, Austin Sindrick in the 19 for Brad Keselowski Racing. Uh, so it'll be nice to see him as a field, field filler as well. Uh, then you've got Matt DiBenedetto and his new ride in the 32 uh, Can-Am Kappa car. I think that's pretty much the same. And again, we've got no Monster Energy logos on this car. What? Why? Why? Anyway, 
Austin Dillon's number three, the new paint scheme for the three car for the first time since I think like 2014. Uh, that's that's good to see. Uh, so we'll get to run against Austin Dillon in that new paint scheme. Then we've got Ty Dillon in a, in a similar paint scheme to what Casey Mears was running last year, but this time Ty Dillon's name will be above uh, the window net there. Uh, then you move on to Dale Earnhardt Jr. with the, his new paint scheme. Good to see, despite the f what? Okay, now we're really screwing up here because we've got Dale Jr. on top of the. Is that that's not where that's supposed to be, right? On on top of the windshield, it says Dale Jr. rather than Monster Energy Cup Series. They're really inconsistent with these name rails. All right, let's move on to Chase Elliott, and that one's inconsistent as well because you got Elliott above the on the front windshield rather than the back windshield. And then, uh, aside from that, ooh, is, is the color wrong too? I don't know. I, I may be a little bit too critical there. The color looks a little too light, but then just maybe my eyes playing tricks on me. Uh, then Joey Gase, that's actually spelled right, <laughs> unlike the uh, Bandwagoners Guide. Uh, nice looking paint scheme, good to get a new driver. Uh, that's a that's a welcome addition. Denny Hamlin, uh, I approve of the uh, the the uh, purple. Uh, that looks nice. Good to get this paint scheme. This is kind of one of the essential paint schemes for sure. Uh, kind of one of the newly revealed uh, kind of big changes for this year. Kevin Harvick, speaking of big changes, moving over from Chevy to Ford. Uh, not much to go over, obviously, but it's good to see that car's in the pack. Uh, number 48, Jimmy Johnson with his new uh, paint scheme, which uh, is uh, has a lot more yellow on it and white. I think it's a good change up. Uh, I'm glad they're adding yellow to this paint scheme so good to see that this car and again we've got Johnson on the on the the roof on the on the windshield what is going on with that Eric Jones that's actually correct and it's good to see five hour energy coming on uh, back uh, rather than saying Jones all the way across this uh, it's good to get the uncensored five hour energy scheme so if you're crazy about five-hour energy schemes, it may be worth the ten dollars. But aside from that, let's let's uh, let's leave that for the end of the video. Uh, Casey Kane again. The Hendrick cars have all the drivers' names on the on the windshield. I don't know what's going on with that. Virtually identical paint scheme again to 2016. Ben Kennedy, another driver who is a Camping World Truck Series driver, field uh, help him fill out the field uh, for this update. So there you go, the 96 car, which should be DJ Kennington who is a Canadian apparently, uh, but yeah, it's not. Uh, then we've got Matt Kenseth and the new DeWalt paint scheme, uh, who is my pick for the Daytona 500. And then uh, Brad Keselowski in the Brad K car. Uh, wonderful. Uh, no Miller Lite this time, but the Monster Energy logos are at least properly placed. And then back to Kyle Larson. So for this race, I feel like it's, uh, it's necessary to do this. Be this car, Kurt Busch. And we have to go, we have to go to Daytona. Now I'm gonna mess with the race settings here because I feel like uh, I've heard some things. So we're gonna do a seven lap race and we're gonna turn fuel, we can't turn fuel consumption off. What I was going to do was turn the tire wear off because I heard tire wear affects the pack racing in this game. As soon as the tires start to wear, the pack breaks up for whatever reason. So I guess we won't be able to do that. So we'll do a 7% race on 105% uh, difficulty. Uh, and uh, we'll do flags. We'll need to do no flags. There's, eh, we'll, do, we'll do all flags just in case. We shouldn't need to pit or anything. So we'll do that. Yes, I'd like to save my changes. And let's go racing at Daytona. All right, so let's do our first race in the 2017 update of NASCAR Heat Evolution. I got a really bad start, but we are racing at Daytona, which you could consider the 2017 Daytona 500. And I got an absolutely appalling start off the uh, green flag here. It was not very good at shifting up, so I need to get in the draft here of Harrison Burton. Try to get keep pace here as we got some cars falling back on the top lane there uh, Kennedy can't remember his full name so I'm just gonna call him DJ Kennington because he's the 96 car and he's at the back uh, let's see all right we're getting a big run here but there's a nice big three wide train here Eric Jones back there so clearly he's still got his 2016 AI there in fact uh, I see a lot of big names back here it looks like Daniel Suarez is up there as well or back here as well. And Jones is having trouble as we go underneath Gase. 
try to get him. Oh, well, shoves us below the yellow line. All right, we'll just give him a little bit of uh, retaliation for that. Sindrick up to the top. He's technically the car directly ahead of us. Wow, this is, that's close. That's awful close there. Stop hitting the apron. Okay, well, we're gonna see if they, if they did anything to patch the pack racing here. It'll be interesting to see if they spread out or if, uh, if this race is uh, tightly packed the whole time. Uh, we'll see. They did, there is a one gigabyte update with this, uh, uh, with this update, so they patched a whole lot into this game. It'll be interesting to see what exactly they patched. All right, so we're trying to get underneath uh, Kennington there. That ain't working. And Suarez up to the top in the 19 car. Let's see if we can get Harrison Burton here, who actually made a pretty good move on the start there to come up through the field a little bit. And there's Dale Earnhardt Jr. who is running back here, as well as Chase Elliott. What is going on? What is with these big names running at the back? That's the front row. That's the Daytona 500 front row running in the back. <laughs> well, I guess it's realistic in that Hendrick uh, has a little bit of trouble in race trim. You know, uh, they run so little down for us, they always spin off our turn four, but they, hey man, they always qualify in the pole, I guess. But we are kind of trapped here behind Kennington. This is actually fairly realistic right now. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie, folks. Oops, that's that's not realistic. I almost passed below the yellow line. But we're three wide in the tri-oval. This, uh, this is not a good thing. And we pulled it off. Little bit of a kiss to the yellow line. As Almondinger slides down a little bit. Wow, Harrison Burton is going to the front. We're just gonna hang with him a little bit. I think he's he's really got this uh, put together. You will notice that there are no names on the rear name rail on any of these cars. So um, I guess they couldn't program that. That's kind of unfortunate. Okay, underneath Burton as the field kind of spreads out just a little bit there. Let's see if we can get underneath Ty Dillon. Ooh, that was close. And he has rookie stripes despite the fact that he's running like, what, 100 NASCAR races at this point? It may be a little bit less than that. All right, so can we get to the top here? We're behind a blue car. Is this Danica? Uh, I can't tell which car that is. I think it's Danica, either that or it's, yeah, it's Danica. That car's not gonna look like that the whole season though. At, at all in this season, actually, as we try to side draft Brad Keselowski, who is the master of the side draft. Down the back straightaway in the draft of, who is this? Oh, we're gonna find out. I still don't know, oh, Tift, okay. That was like, I don't recognize that car at all. That's because uh, it's a fantasy car. All right, in behind Larson, getting a big draft off of him as we go around the outside. And the field is spreading out behind a bit. The front of the field is still kind of packed up. We kind of give a bit of a bump draft to Larson. And we are boxed in there. There's no real good way to get through Kenseth and Larson. So we'll just kind of hang in this line here. Ooh, almost side draft Danica a little too much there. And Blaney down to the inside all by himself. Now Kenseth goes with him. Let's bump. Come on. Come on, Larson. I tried to give him a bump draft and that did not work. All right, there are three wide up there as well. Looks like Bain trying to go to the inside of uh, Logano. Did not work. A lot of people say this uh, this game races a lot like an old school Daytona race, old school plate racing, especially when the rubber banding is off. And I tend to agree with them. Uh, the cars are moving around quite a bit. They're not stuck in their lines. Um, it looks like the bottom is definitely the preferred place to be for sure, but everything else, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an old style plate race. So if, you, if you're expecting what you could do, or if you're expecting what you're probably gonna see on Sunday, uh, I would say you're probably not going to, to get what you want. But if you're a fan of the old plate racing and wanna see it with Gen 6 cars, uh, this, is, this is as good as it's gonna get. So we are kinda just stuck here in 27. We gotta get up, we gotta try to make some moves here. Because we've only got, what, eight laps to go? Seven to go now? Uh, we gotta get on it, Oop. Wow, I cannot believe I saved that one. That should not have been, I should not have saved that. That should have been a massive wreck. Thankfully, I, I managed to pull it off there. Use a little bit of driving skill. 
right down behind Keselowski. Let's get a big run down the back straight away, but they're three wide ahead. Can we at least pass Brad? Yes, we can. Into the side of Larson and Menard. Into turn three. Larson playing dirty there. Blocked to the inside. Tried to put me in the grass. Didn't work. Now we're moving. Now we're moving. We just had to wait back just a little bit and get a run. Let's even go around the outside of the tri-oval here. We're going to get boxed in by Trevor Bain, though. There's a car to the outside getting hung out to dry. Come on, come on, come on. The front, that front group is starting to pull away. They're, they're Gibbsing it right now. They're being Joe Gibbs racing up there, despite the fact that I don't even know if any of the Joe Gibbs cars are in that front breakaway. And we'll bump draft Kenseth down the back straightaway. Try to get him to go. Go, Kenseth, go. He's not going, so we'll get behind Ryan Reed here. Lift off into turn three because we don't want to just pile into the back of Ryan Reed. Underneath Kenseth. Into Kenseth. But it's okay. Now let's draft off of Dylan here. Try to get around Reed and Newman. Five to go. And we got to make up half the distance. Three wide. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Wow, I'm glad I bailed out of that one. And we'll cut in front of Ryan Reed there. Try to get to the inside of Austin Dillon. Can we do it? Denny Hamlin's up in this pack. There we go. We got to run, but we don't have any drafting. Now Ryan Newman dips down to help us a little bit. We're going to try to bump draft him. It ain't working too well, though. And we'll back out of it there just a little bit. Try to give him a, just a little bit of berth here into the uh, fourth turn to the inside of Ryan Newman. Can we pull it off? No. Newman's going to stay to the outside. Can we get around Landon Castle? The bottom lane is definitely moving. The problem is when you get too many cars stacked up on the bottom, you don't, you're don't, you not able to get around these guys on the top. So here we go. Now the field is starting to form up in a line. This is actually fairly realistic to how uh, we saw this go in the duels, or not the duels, the, uh, the clash earlier. Uh, this uh, this week and we're gonna get a big run off of Michael McDowell this is nice the top lane is gonna help us just a little bit as McDowell pops to the bottom so we'll run the top lane a little bit we don't need too much help right now we'll side draft a little bit with uh, Logano a little bit more side draft try to get him back there so we can slingshot around him side draft that was a little too much side draft almost got put in the grandstands there Ooh, and Logano comes back. We're going to go three wide with a couple Penske-supported cars there. And uh, we are, we're are we hung out to dry. Oh, my God, we got hung out. Uh, we don't, there's not a lane to go down into. Oh, no, I made a mistake. I made the classic old plate racing mistake of getting hung out to dry. That doesn't happen quite as much anymore. And now we're getting right behind Logano. There we go. Big draft. Get around Ryan Newman. I tried to shove Logano so I could get in the line there, but I could not quite do it. Looks like Bubba Wallace may be our saving grace here. He got hung out as well. That was close. That was really close. All right, we have to fall back here. And what's the lap to go? Two? Yeah, two to go. All right. Let's get a big run here. Big run. Behind Hamlin. Try to get around Hamlin. Come on, Bubba. Give us a draft here, buddy. Give us a draft. Nope, not happening. Not happening. All right, there we go. Oh, Bubba got into the wall. Now we'll get behind Ryan Newman. Draft, draft. Oh, can we get a bump draft? Please let us bump draft him. Oh, no. And that is a big wreck. And we did get a yellow. So it's going to be a green white checker. And we're going to definitely have to pit, though, because we wrecked. All right. The first attempt at a green-white checker. Let's see what's going Or the first and only attempt at a green-white checker. We're underway. Back racing at Daytona. Let's see if I can't get an atrocious start this time. And we are racing. Two laps to go. How many positions can we make up as the pack is going to be very tightly packed on this the final restart, the only restart of the race. So Burton's going again, but he gets held up. Oh, we should have gone to the bottom lane. Nowhere to go there. Nowhere to go. 
down the back straightaway, get a big draft off of Kenza, but we're not going to have anywhere to go with it. Let's see if we can run to the outside just a little bit here. Nope, it's not happening. Whoops, 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 whoops. We don't want to just wreck Harrison Burton for no reason. Now we get in the draft of Kenseth. Try to get somebody past here. This is... Uh, trying to make too much happen. We get into Austin Dillon. Three cars around. He's... And that's the race ending under caution. <laughs> Well, at least the cautions are coming out quite a bit easier now. Uh, that may actually be a, have been something they patched. So, 38th, that was terrible. Um, so that was the 2017 uh, NASCAR Heat Evolution update. Is it worth $10? I would say no. Um, I think you're really going to have to want to play with the 2017 cars. Uh, and I just can't see a way that you can really justify. I mean, it really is just paint schemes. Yes, there is a new car model, but is that $10 worth a car model? I have a very hard time feeling that way. I mean, there's no new tracks. There is the 2017 schedule, meaning I think just Kansas and uh, Talladega are flipped in season and career mode. So... Uh, I have to say I, I can't I can't give a recommendation on this one there's just not enough content here to justify it being ten dollars so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you found this helpful and if you did please hit the like button on this uh, video also leave a comment down below if you're actually interested in seeing me do a 2017 career mode or if I should stick with my 2016 one I think I'm gonna stick with my 2016 one but, uh, you know, you never know. If the comments decide that uh, they want to see 2017 content, I will start producing it. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.